Charles Purcell presents Hey Dad Dad Yeah Come here What? There's something you need to see Okay, okay What the What is it? How long has this been here? I don't know. I, I just came out to the backyard just now, and uh, there it was. What the hell? What is it? It's a, it's a tiny house. A tiny house? Uh, yeah. What's a tiny house? It's a house that's tiny. Did you see anybody? I mean, anybody go in or out? Or anybody? No. But I think I smell smoke. Oh, shit. Yeah, I do, too. Well, I guess I'd better, uh... Come in! Hey, man, how's it going? Uh, hi, I'm Bob. This is my yard. Hey, Bob, how's it going, man? And you are? I'm Jason, man. Oh, watch out for my bucket there. Yeah, um... Uh, nice house. Thanks, man. I built it myself. Vape? Huh? You vape? You want to hit? Uh, no thanks. Listen, how did you, uh... I mean, wait, you built this yourself? Yeah, man. Every plank, every nail. No electricity or plumbing, though. I'm not certified or whatever, so I couldn't get the permits. Pretty nice, though, otherwise, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, it's very nice. Uh, good workmanship. Uh, but I never heard... I mean, how could you build this... And we never saw or heard. Oh, man, I built it at my dad's house, and, and I had it moved over here last night. I think you were already asleep, man. Moved here? Yep, just put it on a truck and rigged it with a big old harness and just dropped it right down here in your yard, man. Um, why? Oh, me and my dad weren't getting along so well, and so I just said adios, you know? You just left. Well, the old man kicked me out, if truth be told. But why did you come here? Why not? You got a nice yard. Where else am I going to go? Hey, listen, man, you're going to have to excuse me. I was just heading into a nice meditation when you came in. I'd kind of like to get back to it. Meditation? Yeah, man, you meditate? Well, no, I mean, I guess sometimes. Uh, Nothing like it, man. So I'll see you later, all right, Bob? Um, yeah. Close the door there. Thanks. Um, yeah. Watch out for the bucket. Um, yeah, yeah. Peace, man. Hey, Dad? Good morning, Tim. Hey, Dad. Yeah? How long is Jason going to live in our backyard? Oh, I don't know exactly. It's been like a week. Yeah, you know, don't worry about it. Come on downstairs. I'll, I'll fix you some breakfast. Okay. Aren't you going to kick him out? I don't know. Uh, yes, sure. I mean, I guess so. He smells funny. Oh, that's just his vape. His vape? He, uh, he meditates. It smells funny. He's kind of cool, though, don't you think? Cool? No, he's not cool. He's weird. Hey, man. Jason. Good morning, you two. You want some eggs? What are you doing? I came in to use your bathroom. I figured you wouldn't mind. Saw these eggs here in your fridge. Thought I'd scramble them up. You want some? How about you, Timbo? Want some eggs? Look, I haven't, uh, I mean, I've been okay with you in the yard, but you you can't just walk into the house and and help yourself to... Well, yeah, but I figured you'd be cool with me using the bathroom. 
My bucket method was getting pretty old, if you know what I mean. Dad. Okay, Tim. So, scrambles for everybody? Uh, sure, yeah. Tell you what, why don't you get some plates there, Tim? And Bob, why don't you pour the juice? These puppies are just about done. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. Dad. It's okay, Tim. Looks like it's going to be a pretty nice day today, weather-wise, I mean. Uh, yeah, I guess. Dad, Dad, wake up! What is it? You better come downstairs. Okay, okay. What the... Hey, Bob. Rise and shine, sleepyhead. What the... Who are all these people? Ah, just people. There's there's a lot of them, too. Yes, there's a lot of them. Look, you can't just... What are you... The more the merrier, right? Listen, you're a cool dude. You got this nice place, a big old couch, and chairs and stuff, you know, and a bathroom. A bathroom. Yeah, man, that bathroom is a real draw, man. It's key. You got a nice bathroom. Thanks. No, I mean it, Bob. You should be proud. Nice house, nice couch, nice TV, nice bathroom. Listen, Jason, you can't have all these people here. You can't have all these visitors, at least not all at once. Visitors? You can't have all these people. I mean, you can't entertain. Oh, man, I'm not entertaining. Well, it sure looks like... These aren't visitors, Bob. And they moved in. Yeah, we're all a big happy family, man. Look... I've been cool with everything so far, but th- this is too much. Dad, there's two people making out on the couch. Just a minute, Tim. But I want to watch cartoons. Hey, little Tim, man. Those cartoons aren't good for you. Too much violence. Uh, I'm, look, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Leave? Leave where? Here. Leave here. Leave my house. Leave my yard. I'm sorry, Jason, but you- you're just going to have to leave. All of us? Yes, of course, all of you. Little Tim, too? No, of course not. Tim is my son. What am I, Bob? We were perfect strangers a week ago. Wow, man. First my dad kicks me out, and now you. I'm I'm sorry, but you really have to go. Yeah, man, but I thought we had something, Bob. We did, Jason. You taught me a lot about life. You reminded me uh, that a free spirit is to be treasured. You brought a life force back into this house and a youth in me I thought I'd lost forever and and I thank you for that. Oh man, that's deep. Now finish your Fruit Loops and get the hell out of here. And take your friends with you. Oh, they're not my friends. I, I never saw them before. Okay, whatever. Everybody out. Everybody. You two, off the couch. Come on, out you go. Let's go, Jason. Okay, Bob, okay. You did the right thing, Dad. I know, son. You understand? But that doesn't make it any easier. Jesus, Dad, don't be weird. Come on, watch some cartoons. Here, have a banana. Thanks. Hey, Dad? Dad? What is it, Tim? Come here, in the backyard. Whoa. Yeah, look at that. The house, Jason's house, it's, it's gone. Did you, uh... Nope, I didn't see anything. Just came out here and it was gone. He didn't say goodbye? Nope. Well, I, I told him to leave. Yeah. Hardly left a trace, he'd never know he was here. <laughs> look out, Dad. What is it? He left his bucket. (laughs) Good old Jason. That a boy, Jason.
Did you ever wonder where the pen came from? You mean pens? Like pens? Like what you write with? I mean, just think. They woke up one day, and um, all of a sudden they could write. Like, where did this even come from? What? I mean, how did they even try to write before pens? Just with their fingers? They just, what, dip their finger in mud? Huh? Or shit. You can't always find mud when you need it. They probably dipped their fingers in shit so they could write, because cause there were no pens yet. But then everybody walked around all day with their fingers smelling like shit because they just finished sending out all their Christmas cards or whatever. You know? Because they had to address all the envelopes. But then again, there, there probably was no Christmas before there was no pens. What are you talking about? Oh, wait, no. The pen wasn't invented before Christmas, probably. There probably wasn't even writing. I mean, you could write your name in the sand at the beach, but the tide just comes in and wipes it away. It's like, hey, I just wrote that. What are you doing, tide? And then Copernicus comes over and says, hey, don't blame the ocean. It's the moon that makes the tides do that. I invented that. And then it's like, hey, who are you? And he's like, I'm Copernicus. And then the other guy says, hey, Copernicus, that's pretty genius. You should write that down, you know, like, you know, for like for science. You should write that down. But then Copernicus says, I can't. And the other guy says, why not? And Copernicus says, because the pen hasn't been invented yet. What is this, a bit? Are you like trying to make jokes? Yeah, pretty good, huh? I mean, yeah, I, I guess. But, but the premise is stupid. What? What do you mean? I mean, everybody knows the pen was invented gradually, you know, like over time, right? I mean, there was paint on cave walls, even in prehistoric times, and then charcoal and engraving on stone tablets and, and dipping quills in ink. And I mean, there was a whole long line of you know, development until they got to the modern pen. So? So the premise of your joke is that people didn't even know how to or they, they couldn't write before the modern pen? It doesn't make any sense. That's what makes it funny. Yeah, but the punchline is supposed to be funny. The, the premise has to make some kind of sense for the audience to buy into what you're saying. Why? Well, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of the rule. Well, I'm a rule breaker. Well, okay, sure. You know, do what you want. I'm, I'm just telling you, I, I don't think it's going to work. Hey, I'm a tree shaker, not a jelly maker. What? I'm just saying. How, how does that even apply to what we're talking about here? Hey, maybe they wrote with jelly. You mean dip their fingers in jelly? Yeah. So their fingers would smell like jelly all day? Yeah. Well, that would be a lot better than shit. Yeah, I like boysenberry. <laughs> Me too. I put that shit on everything. Jelly. Put that shit on everything. Sponsored by the National Council of Jelly Manufacturers.
Long after the pain had subsided, he was able to return to his beloved walks along the river. On this particular day, with the waning drops of the storm trickling through the tree canopy, he darted and dashed as though he were a young boy, overstepping the limits that nature itself had put upon him. He dreamed too big, he flew too close to the sun. He ran as though a boy, and then fell as though an old man. And he lay prone and helpless among the tall grasses near the uh, the, uh, the water, the river, the, the the teeming river that was that was rapidly racing by him and his prospects. The day was pleasant, the breeze was light and cool. The sun was warm, but not blinding, passing in and out of pleasant clouds. So he allowed himself the opportunity to dream and to think and to rest. He thought his injury might not be all that serious, so he just assumed for the for the moment that it was not, rather than be too quick to explore, to investigate, he preferred not to know for a little while, so he didn't attempt to get up, he just stayed in the position where God put him and he just relaxed, and the thoughts came, thoughts of Papua New Guinea, where he visited as a young man on his trips to the South Seas. He was on a tour of sorts. He, uh, he landed himself a job on a ship. The job wasn't all that exciting, but it afforded him the opportunity to see lands that he otherwise never would have seen. So, on the available uh, days when he was otherwise not employed with the work of his uh, employer, he would, when in dock, disembark and follow the tourists, and then when the tourists took a right-hand turn, he would take a left-hand turn and to, to see what he would find. One memorable night in Beijing, they visited Tiananmen Square on May Day. The massive square was packed shoulder to shoulder with people out celebrating May Day. And like little islands in the sea of people, rising above would be a flatbed truck with a dozen or so armed military personnel. Not only armed, but their guns cocked and ready at a moment's notice. So there was no revelry, as you may find in other celebrations. There was just a people, just a sea of people, just milling about. And the whole mass of them as though one entity. A body of water flowing or, or a massive field of wheat with all the chaffs moving in unison. And swaying here and there and to and fro. No music or celebration necessarily, just, just people. 
And so he walked among the people and took it all in. The singular aroma that is Tiananmen Square filled with a million Chinese. And then walking away from the most densely populated areas to the edge of the crowd and then not so much shoulder to shoulder but arms length to arms length and then the crowd thinned as he continued to walk and eventually found himself in a neighborhood fewer and fewer people a dark neighborhood street lights not no moonlight yes little houses little walkways little roads no cars in those days very few cars in Beijing only bicycles and pedestrians he found himself walking alone in a small Chinese neighborhood and soon discovered that he really didn't know where he was anymore and he was a bit turned around and he walked and turned on his heels and walked back where he came from but it didn't quite look the same he took a left here and a right there and now he was wishing there were tourists to follow but there were none and this young man alone lost in the neighborhoods of Beijing Revolution by Carsey Blanton. This episode of Charles Purcell Presents is available right now wherever you find your podcasts or go to the website charlespurcell.com for the full archive and all the other series in the podcast family. Follow me on Facebook. Write to me at charlespurcell at gmail. Thanks to our flagship terrestrial station, Riverwest Radio, riverwestradio.com. Theme music composed and performed by Peter Donalds. From the New Arts and Media Studios in Milwaukee, I'm Charles Purcell.
Hey, wait, you can't just cross the border. Why not? Because this is our country. The same country that stole this land from indigenous peoples? Don't give me that shit. Every country was took from the people before. So you think you have the right to keep me out at the point of a gun? I sure as hell do. Oh, I see. So you just show up, kill the natives, steal the land, call it your own, write the laws, and keep everybody else out. That's right. And you think that's legal? Yep. You think this makes sense? Yeah. You think that's moral? Well, I... Borders. They're as stupid as they sound. Hashtag abolish borders.